Welcome to this miles by foot tour of Detroit Metropolitan Wayne County Airport, code DTW. DTW is the 18th busiest airport in the U.S., the busiest in Michigan as well as any states that border Michigan. It's the third largest hub for Delta Airlines, which make up a comfortable majority of the airport's traffic. Spirit Airlines has a substantial market share at DTW as well, and is one of their primary focus cities around the country. These strong hub activities at DTW have strengthened its position in America's aviation network. Today, DTW is one of the largest employers and economic engines in the state, supporting nearly 90,000 jobs for Michiganders and about $10 billion of annual local impact. For passengers connecting in Detroit, the terminal's design is famously simple, despite its imposing physical footprint. To this day, if I have a tight connection on Delta, Detroit's the airport I trust the most to get me to my next gate on time. Let's explore. DTW is more like two independent airports that just so happen to share an airfield. The main terminal, the McNamara Terminal, is to the south and contains three concourses that serve Delta and its SkyTeam partner, Air France. The Evans Terminal, formerly just the North Terminal, hosts everyone else, including One World and Star Alliance Airlines, along with low-cost carriers, including Spirit. These terminals are separated by a mile of taxiways and aprons and are only connected by a landside shuttle. I'll go over both terminals in detail, as well as how to transit between them, don't worry, but I'll also be sharing a walking tour of every gate in both terminals. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be notified when that and other videos are published. Three out of four passengers at DTW are flying Delta. If that's you, then you'll be using the McNamara Terminal and its three concourses during your visit. On a map, there are two large departure halls, the smaller of the two containing concourses B and C, which are connected to the much larger concourse A through an underground tunnel. Concourse C is the most compact of the three and hosts local connections to smaller Michigan airports and regional services to destinations throughout the Northeast. Concourse C's gates are clustered in groups as the planes they use are small enough to crowd together. At the end of the concourse, you'll see that there's room to expand as DTW attracts more destinations. Near the entrance to Concourse C, there's a communal seating area downstairs that serves gates C1 through C7 and above them, you'll find one of Delta's four Sky Clubs at DTW. Concourse C doesn't really have much food or shopping to choose from, so if you need something, you'll probably go to Concourse B on the other side of the building. Concourse B features flights between Detroit and medium-sized destinations, for example, my own home airport in Louisville. Unlike C, there are restaurants and newsstands all down B's length, and several new shops are under construction to accommodate returning traffic. A bar recently reopened at the end of the concourse, offering a comfortable place to sit and relax and catch some of the action on the runway and in the terminal. A 700-foot tunnel connects the two main buildings of McNamara, complete with moving sidewalks and a dazzling light and sound show as you walk through. If you'd rather, though, there's a button on either end of the tunnel, to the right as you descend the escalators, which suspends the program for five minutes, more than enough time to pass through even at a slow pace. Concourse A is the largest terminal at DTW, and in fact, it's the second longest in the world at just under a mile long. You'll find the longest one at Kansai International near Osaka in Japan. In fact, Delta uses DTW to host several long-haul routes to East Asia, including Tokyo Haneda and Nagoya in Japan, Seoul, South Korea, and Shanghai, with service to Beijing starting in June 2023. Throughout the terminal, you'll notice many signs are in both Japanese and in simplified Chinese, and you'll hear announcements made in Japanese and Mandarin as well. Concourse A has 62 gates along its length, and while you can walk the whole thing, DTW has a better option. The Express Tram People Mover is located above the terminal level and provides rapid transit to three stations in Concourse A, one to the south, one to the north, and one in the center, where you'll either exit to baggage claim or connect to B and C via the tunnel. The trip between each station takes about 90 seconds, and from one end to the other in three and a half minutes. Two trams run in opposite directions simultaneously. Even if you just miss the tram and have to wait, you'll still be able to cross the enormous terminal in under five minutes. Walking, if you're curious, takes about 15 minutes end to end with moving sidewalks to help. Each station is also home to a Delta Sky Club, right off the tram on the far stations, and downstairs at the central station. 
Concourse A also has Delta service desks if you need assistance during your travel. Located right below each tram station at gates A18, A43, and A63. Generally, smaller flights are on the east side of the terminal, the side underneath the tram, and the larger flights depart using the huge gate areas on the west side. Here you can see the most impressive aircraft in the Delta fleet, most of which are bound for Asia or Europe, where Delta serves London Heathrow, Paris, Frankfurt, and Amsterdam, a route I've flown twice on this channel. The McNamara Terminal has only one airside entrance hall, flanked on either side by duty-free and high-end retailers, and the terminal's only religious reflection room. Downstairs is the baggage claim, which they call the luggage claim for some reason. While there isn't a USO lounge in either terminal at DTW, both terminals feature a Freedom Center, run by a Michigan charity to serve a similar purpose for traveling service members, veterans, and their families. In McNamara, this lounge is near the center at A43. McNamara has one more highlight, its own Weston Hotel right off Concourse A, a 400-room property with its own TSA checkpoint to enter Concourse A. Ground transportation options are similar at both terminals. Baggage claims are on the ground floor, and walking out you'll see parking and rental car shuttles to take you to the airport's rental car center at the northeast edge of the airport served by these rental car providers. Other providers are available off-site and have their own shuttle schedule. If you're departing Detroit on Delta, they maintain kiosks for check-in here in the parking garage as well as in the landside building on the top floor. Any line will do, it's all Delta. However, if you arrive on Delta, like I did, and are transferring to another airline, or vice versa, you'll need to take the Interterminal Shuttle, whose rally points at McNamara are just outside the Weston's external entrance on the departure level, or on the ground floor just inside the parking garage. The terminal service runs about once every 20 minutes and takes about 10 minutes to get there, stopping at the McNamara parking garage before heading over to the other terminal. There's a screen inside the Weston that will tell you when the shuttle is on its way. The other terminal at DTW is the recently renamed Evans Terminal, formerly just called the North Terminal. The Evans Terminal serves every other airline at DTW, including United, American, Alaska, Frontier, JetBlue, Southwest, non-SkyTeam international carriers, and Spirit, which maintains Detroit as a focus city. Built alongside the original Smith Terminal, Still visible from the terminal's western windows, the Evans Terminal serves about a quarter of DTW's total traffic. And if you or your family were loyal Delta Flyers like mine, you may not have known this terminal existed. Okay, I'll admit it. By itself, the Evans Terminal still accounts for over 3 million emplanements a year, which if it were its own airport would put it somewhere between Indianapolis and Pittsburgh for traffic, both of which I've visited on this channel. If you're transiting between terminals, there are two bus stalls across from the Evans Terminal that you'll use to catch the shuttle between terminals, accessed after crossing over the discharge lanes via the Sky Bridge. If you're departing, you'll come down from the Sky Bridge after parking or taking transportation to the ticket counters on the second floor. COVID testing and vaccinations are available on the first floor, along with baggage claim and airline offices. Spirit makes up nearly half the passenger load at Evans, flying to 14 year-round destinations and three seasonal ones to a variety of locales in North America. Their most common service is Atlanta, with an average of three daily services. Spirit also offers a daily non-stop service to Cancun, and unlike typical ultra-low-cost carrier services, all their routes have at least one flight each day, and some have two. American is next for passenger count, about a quarter of Evansville's daily traffic, and they currently serve eight of their hubs. Charlotte and O'Hare compete for the most traffic, with about five daily services aboard mainline and regional American planes, while Phoenix and Miami average about one trip a day. United is actually fourth, but we'll cover them next. United offers hub service to five of their hubs, and as you're checking in, you'll notice there's a line for each destination, which is kind of cute, I guess, like if you were lining up for a bus. Newark's route is the busiest, with an average of five flights a day, while Denver and Houston only maintain two trips daily. Southwest, the OG low-cost carrier, is third for passenger count at the Evans Terminal, with two daily flights each to Baltimore, Chicago Midway, St. Louis, and Nashville, and two weekly flights to Las Vegas and Phoenix. 
At about 60 flights a week, half that of United, Southwest's Boeing 737s carry about twice as many passengers per flight to make Southwest third for passenger count. Frontier is fifth, with five year-round destinations to cities they're focusing on, while JetBlue and Alaska squabble over sixth. JetBlue provides service to Boston and JFK in New York, and Alaska flies to, well, you know by now. Three international carriers use Evans as well, all of which have restarted international service. Lufthansa offers a daily service to their hub in Frankfurt, Germany, and Royal Jordanian offers non-stop service to the Middle East through Amman, Jordan's capital. Air Canada flies between major Canadian hubs Montreal and Toronto, the latter just a three-hour drive across the border. Lufthansa operates a lounge on the west side of the terminal near gate D6, but all outbound ticket holders with any airline can reserve entry ahead of time for a fee. Like in McNamara, the Evans Terminal has a Freedom Center for veterans, service members, and their families located at D17. Even though McNamara might seem like the main attraction, the Evans Terminal has an impressive variety of newsstands, boutiques, restaurants, both sit-down and take-out, plane spotting opportunities, and art displays. The terminal is about two-thirds the size of Concourse A back at McNamara, about six-tenths of a mile long with moving sidewalks, and about 12 minutes end-to-end. -end. DTW is quite an airport, whether you're just passing through on a Delta connection, or it's your origin or your destination. DTW is an amenities first airport, offering lots of options and variety in terms of what you can do while you're here. I've always found DTW visually distinct too. With just a quick glance up at the tram, the fountain at the concourse's center, or the tunnel's light show, I know exactly where I am. And even in a time crunch, I'll still take a moment to enjoy my brief stay in the Motor City. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to Miles by Foot. Next week, we'll be covering every concourse, gate, nook and cranny of both terminals, then we're heading off to a new airport to explore. If you don't want to miss the next video, turn on those notifications too. Until then, thanks for watching, and keep moving forward. Stay on board for gates A56 through A78.